Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to STW Sports and today I'm joined by Hartlepool United fan Nick McNaughton. Well, welcome Nick and first question I'm going to ask you is Hartlepool are back in Skybet League 2 for the first time in four years. How are you feeling going into the new season? Yeah, it's exciting. It feels like the league that we should be in. Um, I think there's a couple of big fish in the non-league pond, such as uh, Notts County, Chesterfield, um, Wrexham as well now. And I think we're just glad to see the back of it. It's probably one of the hardest leagues to get out of, really. And you guys have obviously had to fight for it in the last few years, went through such a struggling time when the club nearly went out of business. How relieved are you as a Hartlepool fan that the good times finally feel like they are back? It's a long time coming. Yeah, um, we always thought that, obviously, since the playoff in 2004 or five, we always thought that, yeah, we're going to have that momentum. We'll carry it on. And, yeah, we've had a promotion, finished second a couple of years later, getting back to League One. But ever since then, we've always found ourselves struggling and in relegation battles. And especially with the finances a couple of years ago, um, we're just quite lucky. <laughs> and it feels like um, even in the playoff final, we rode our luck again. Um, but it feels like our luck finally paid off and we've got we're reaping our rewards, which are definitely needed. Um, yeah, next up, we're going to speak to you about the very eventful playoff final against Cork <laughs> now, which took place only a few weeks ago, around about six weeks ago. Uh, roller coaster of emotions from taking the lead, obviously, to conceding in the very last minute to winning the penalty shootout. How, what, just describe the day to me, please, and how you felt, obviously, at the end of it as well. Yeah, uh, first of all, it's a, it's a long journey, especially for the Hartlepool fans uh, to go down to Bristol. I think we set off at about six in the morning, quarter six, uh, just to get there and have a couple of pints, settle the nerves. Um, going into the match, we thought, yeah, we, we last time we played, talking, we beat them. Uh, so if we can just do that again, um, we had a full strength team, which we're really looking forward to. And the momentum that we had in the playoffs, especially the Bromley game, uh, which we were about 3-0 up in about half an hour or so, um, we thought, surely we must be favourites here. Uh, not to underestimate Torquay, because they're fantastic and really fighting for the title as well all the season. Um, with the goal of Armstrong, he, he's a natural goal scorer. And I think that's what Hurricane fans are going to have on the hands as well. Unfortunately, I'd love to keep him, because um, he's just a poacher. That's all he is. You'll never find him out on the wing. You'll never find him dropping deep. He's there to put the ball in the net. And that's exactly what he did on the day. Um but after that, in the second half, we really had our backs against the wall. And it almost felt like it was it was coming. And there was a load of us um, standing around and it was just counting down on your phones, looking at the minutes that we had left. And yeah, you just kind of had that feeling of, it can't be this easy. We, we, we can't just have an easy ride in the playoff final. And it's just typical Hartlepool that not only did we concede in the last minute, but against the goalkeeper, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, that must have been a weird moment. I think when something like that happens, you think it's not going to be your day. But penalties arrived. And what were you think? Because penalties shoot out, as we saw with England in the Euro final a few weeks ago. It really is a lottery and anything mm -hmm. can happen. And what were your thoughts going into it? And what was the relief when you actually came out on top? I think by that point, after extra time and conceding the last minute, I just wanted the game over, if I'll be brutally honest. Um, I don't think I could, my nerves could take it anymore. But like you've just said about the, the penalty, it is a total lottery. Um, and we lost our keeper during the season, uh, Ben Killip. Uh, we lost our injury with a shoulder. That's when our own striker resorts had to go in goal for the majority of the game um, through the season. Uh but yeah, Brad James, he, he stepped up. He's only a young lad on loan from Middlesbrough, just down the road. And I can't thank him enough, really. And all you can do is just hit the ball and just hope. That's what it tends to be. Yeah, certainly a great moment, of course, there. That was a fantastic moment for Hartlepool fans, as you've been through a lot in the last few years. As for um, the good memories of Hartlepool, like, what is your standout memory, would you say, as a fan? Um, I think every fan will probably go to the same match which is uh, Sheffield Wednesday, um, beat them 3-0. It was Ad Adam Boyd, and yeah, he scored probably one of the greatest goals we've seen at the Vic. Um, it was absolutely lashing down on a Friday night. Um, I remember standing there, I think I was only about 13, 14 at the time, um, absolutely soaked through, and yeah, Adam Boyd picked up the ball from the 
um, his own half, dribbled a Cruyff turn and then a little dink over the keeper. And yeah, he, there was a, a Guardian article that compared him to uh, Van, our own Van Basten um, at the time and to watch Adam Boyd um, against Sheffield Wednesday is definitely something special. And I think it's a, it's a go-to memory for a lot of Hartlepool fans, including myself, yeah. Yeah, and I just want to ask now about players, maybe. Is there a standout player you've seen in a Hartlepool shirt over the years? Yeah, there's a bit of soft spot. I've always looked at Joel Porter. So he he came to England with a bit of a, a pinball career where he was getting trials at different clubs and he couldn't really get the right work permit or the right contract. And um, he recently gave an interview on a podcast um, in which he said Hartlepool was a last, uh, last ditch attempt at a life in England. Um, I think he travelled down from the south coast right up to the northeast um, for a trial and it went from there. But the way that we saw him play for many, many years, he was he's just stand out for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I want to, always want to ask as a Hartlepool fans, have you ever met Jeff Stelling? <laughs> <laughs> I've not, personally. Um, but my uh, dad and my brother were lucky enough to get uh, win tickets uh, to sit in the, the corporate boxes for the playoff final a couple of weeks ago. And um, my dad met Jeff Selling, shook his hand, and he said he's probably one of the nicest people you could meet. Yeah. Yeah, certainly always great, of course, to have, you know, such a, you know, obviously a great, obviously, pundit and presenter as a Hartlepool fan. He really speaks passionately about Hartlepool in the Sky Sports studio as well. And uh, obviously now building up to the League Two season, your first game against Crawley Town, I believe, at home. Uh, hopefully fans will be in. I think they will be at this point. Um, what are your thoughts going to that game? Obviously, difficult one, but a good start can go a long way. Yeah, I think that's what we're hoping for. Um, like most fans in the league, we just want the last to try. Um, we've got to this league on our own merit, and uh, we've kept quite a few of the same players, which we've been over the moon to keep. Someone like Jamie Sterry has just been a standout player, which we thought was easily going to get snapped up by a League One team. So the same sign of two-year contract is unbelievable as a fan here. Um, I think there's a little bit of trepidation and a few nerves creeping in um, because we lost again in friendlies, um, three on the bounce to National League North teams. Um, I always take the, the friendlies with a, a pinch of salt and sometimes a, um, a truckload of salt at times as well. So it's all about the fitness. The manager's going to be trying new things. He's got trialists in. And like you said, it's only been about six weeks or so since the playoff final. So compared to a lot of the other clubs, in, um, in the league, we've had a really short time to prepare. Um, and a lot of clubs, I thought, would have already had the business dealings done. They've already uh, scouted the players that you have. And so going in the first league game, we just want to see um, a bit of passion. And I think that's what the fans want as well. And that's what they'll get from us, whether it be the atmosphere from the northeast, uh, northwest corner uh, to even just the words of encouragement when the crowd, uh, when the players come out from the Civil Mall stand, and that's what the, the players will get. And I think they'll feed off that, which we definitely found in the playoffs. And the final question for you as well is, um, where do you think, if you get a prediction right now, where do you think Hartlepool will finish in League Two next season? Um, I'll be realistic. I'm not going to say we'll be up there again in the playoffs. <laughs> um, I think, hand on heart, I'll, I'll take um, just outside the relegation zone. If you offered me now safety in League Two, I'd snap your hand off for it because we know it's a, it's an unforgiving league and the last thing we want to do is to drop back down in there. Um, and we know it comes with the financials as well. So if you can stay one more year in League Two, that's more league money coming in. Um, and once you're able to recycle that and maybe keep that momentum going, that's when you can really build a core strength to the team and maybe push on a little bit more. So we know it's baby steps. We're not going to be expecting anything more than that. Um, all we can do is just be quite thankful that we've got a, a chairman who's definitely back in, who's definitely got the right vision. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was open and said he wants to get us back into the Football League. Raj Singh, can't thank him enough. That's exactly what he's done. Um, he's been quite open and honest with the fans. That's exactly his plan. Um, all we can do is just really push on. And yeah, like I said, hopefully we'll still be in uh, this position next year. Yeah, well, that's all we've got time for anyway, Nick. Well, thank you very much for the interview and good luck to Hartlepool United going into the new season. Cheers. Thank you.